Hello, YouTubers. This is the Dark Web Deacon. And in today's episode, we're going to dis discuss the difference between the surface web, the deep web, and the dark web, aka the dark net. Now, often these three layers are depicted as an iceberg. To start the journey, we're going to look at the surface web. Now, the surface web is anything that can be indexed by a typical link crawling search engine. Engines like Google, Bing, and Yahoo. In addition, the surface web includes all the websites that you are familiar with and you probably use daily, whether it be Gmail or Yahoo Mail or media sites or Disney, Netflix, your favorite news outlet. Those all encompass the surface web. From a purist definition standpoint, the surface web is anything that a search engine can find while the deep web is anything that it cannot find. Now, what can a search engine find? Well, the answer is a lot. Roughly, the rough estimates are that about 96% of the internet is not indexable by a typical search engine. Now, let's look at the second slice of the iceberg, uh, the deep web. Can the deep web be accessed with a normal web browser just like the surface web? The answer is a definite yes. Um, you can access the deep web via directed queries in a search form or by be giving special access or, or credentials uh, to the deeper sites. Now, the deep web is really all about private networks, whether they be corporate networks, uh, university networks, even your dentist or your doctor. Right, so all of these networks, usually you need some type of, of name and password uh, to get into them. Um, or you have a queryable search form. And so you could be on the surface web, you may be looking for a new house or an apartment, you enter in certain criteria of what you're looking for, you hit submit, and then it produces a list of homes or rental properties in the area that fit your criteria. So all that content makes up the deep web. And by far, the deep web is the overwhelming majority of the internet when you, you look at all the servers, websites, um, and various forums out there. Now, the deep web is not the dark web. These things often get conflated. What makes the dark web different and special is a few things. One is in terms of access. The dark web, in order to access it, you need some type of special browser, such as Tor or other type of software packages. In addition, to get to the, some of the darker parts of the dark web, you often have to have a persona and build credentials within certain chat rooms or within certain forums to get access to deeper and deeper links. Overall, the dark web is a nefarious place. It's a place where they, you can purchase drugs, you can purchase weapons, there's human trafficking, and there is a lot of uh, illicit type of, of pornography. So the question that often gets asked is if the dark web has all of the, this illicit activity and you can purchase all these weapons and guns and drugs, etc., why can't it just be shut down? Or should it be shut down? So the first question is, can it be shut down? The, the answer is no. And the reason is that the dark web is not a single point or location and it's not a single server or website it's really the an amalgamation of of services and servers and websites and forums and chat rooms that are scattered throughout the world the second piece is well should it be shut down and while there is a lot of negative and behavior that occurs on the dark web at the end of the day at its core the dark web is merely a mechanism to securely and anonymously transfer information. And this can have a net positive on society. It allows political dissidents. It allows those avoiding suppressive governments. It allows whistleblowers to be able to get information to other people throughout the world that without it, they wouldn't be able to. So the dark web in a sense, does provide a very clear path and avenue for the free exchange of ideas and speech. If you liked today's video, be sure to like, subscribe, and provide comments.